The Legal Toolkit with Jared Correa. With guest John Strohmeyer, a round of defining moments, and the entire cast of Game of Thrones drops by to say hi. Not just the stars, everyone, even the extras. But first, your host, Jared Correa. Hello, friends, and welcome back to the Legal Toolkit Podcast. My name is Jared Korea, and because Ken Ober was unavailable, I'm your host. I'm the CEO of Red Cave Law Firm Consulting, a business management consulting service for attorneys. Find us online at www.redcavelegal.com. I'm the COO of Gideon Software, Inc. We build chatbots so law firms can convert more leads. You can find out more about Gideon at www.gideon.legal. Before we get rolling, I'd like to take a moment, as I always do, to thank my mom for listening to every episode. Thanks, mom. Hi. I'd also like to thank our sponsors. They're the reason you're listening to this show right now. Clio's cloud-based practice management software makes it easy to manage your law firm from intake to invoice. Try it for free at clio.com. That's C-L-I-O dot com. We would like to thank Alert Communications for sponsoring this podcast. If any law firm is looking for call, intake, or retainer services available 24-7, 365, just call 866-827-5568. Scorpion is the leading provider of marketing solutions for the legal industry. With nearly 20 years of experience serving attorneys, Scorpion can help grow your practice. Learn more at scorpionlegal.com. Abby Connect has delivered premium live receptionist and answering services to lawyers since 2006. You can try them out for free at abbyconnect.com. TimeSolve is the number one web-based time and billing software for lawyers. Providing solutions since 1999, TimeSolve provides the most comprehensive billing features for law firms big and small. www.timesolve.com. So let me be clear. I'm not a comic book nerd like some of my friends. <clears throat> Ethan, WandaVision is a show on Disney+. Plus. It's a superhero show. It's this Marvel series about two superheroes, Vision and Scarlet Witch, who live in the suburbs. A superhero sitcom about superheroes living in the suburbs. I thought to myself, what a total shit sandwich that's going to be. But guess what? I actually love it. It's a great show. So before I begin to talk about this a little bit, spoiler alert supply. Do not listen to this monologue. Skip past it. If you have not watched through episode four of WandaVision on Disney Plus yet. In fact, know that I will probably spoil things I don't even know I'm spoiling because I've never read a single comic book in my whole life. And that's part of my operating theory here. If I've never read a comic book and I like the show, it's going to be pretty good, right? So I want to get into like six reasons why I like WandaVision now streaming on Disney Plus. Superhero movies, I think can be boring, dumb, and illogical. And the whole thesis is weird to me. Like, everybody's massively powerful. So how does anyone win, right? You've got to keep up these wild plots and they get more outlandish every time. That's why you've got a movie like The Avengers Endgame and Infinity War that were basically chasing MacGuffins the entire time. They're time traveling. They're hopping between multiple dimensions. See, I told you I was going to spoil a ton of stuff. Iron Man dies. I hope you've seen the movie. Wonder Woman 1984 just came out on HBO. Steaming pile of garbage. The stakes are so high. There's like, at the end of the movie, it's like nuclear weapons launching everywhere. And basically, they talk to the villain and he stops doing what he's doing. Terrible movie, really dumb. And I think it's partly because these superhero movies don't have anywhere to go. So I think it's really cool in the WandaVision show where the superheroes are doing non-superhero things, like being in a talent show, mowing the grass, planning a garden party. It's a really interesting thing. So number two, second reason I like the show, is it's this homage to classic sitcoms, which I really like, right? So we're talking about the first three episodes of the show are essentially 50s, 60s, and 70s sitcoms, and they go decade by decade in order. How can this happen, you may ask? Another spoiler. The show is set in a fake town in New Jersey called Westview, and it's called the Westview Anomaly 
because Scarlet Witch, whose name is Wanda, has like this power to like bend reality. So they can do literally anything they want in this segment, which is great. So the sitcom details are like perfect. It's amazingly spot on what they've done here. Like the furniture, the clothing, the jokes, the dialogue, it's great. And I thought the 60s episode was particularly fantastic because it looked just like an episode of Bewitched, which was a great play on this idea of like the Scarlet Witch being a superhero. I love history, by the way, as a digression. So if I could have any job, money notwithstanding, I'd probably be a history professor. So looking at this stuff, I think is really cool. Reason number three, why I like WandaVision. Elizabeth Olsen is just like absolutely ridiculously smoking hot. I'm sorry. I may love Elizabeth Olsen more than even I like history. So I would probably just watch the show for her, honestly. So I've got a little bit of Elizabeth Olsen thirst going on. So sue me. Uh, Well, don't, actually. You're all lawyers. Reason number four. I think they keep the good parts of the Marvel movies. So one of the reasons I like the Marvel movies better than other superhero movies is because they're actually funny. They don't take themselves super seriously. Thor Ragnarok, a funny movie. Guardians of the Galaxy, funny movie. Ant-Man, funny movie. So this guy, Randall Park, is an FBI agent in the show, and he's actually really funny. He was on a TV show on ABC called Fresh Off the Boat a while back, which was probably the last show I actually watched on network TV regularly in like 2012. He's great. Kat Dennings is in the show as well. She's a scientist. She was in the Thor movie. Uh, She was in the 40-Year-Old Virgin. She was in Two Broke Girls. She's funny, too. So that kind of tamps down the darkness of the show, which is the next reason I like the show. It's really dark and really sad, which you don't see in superhero movies a whole lot. I think the only thing that comes close is probably the Logan Wolverine movie that came out in 2017. That was like an amazing movie about a broke-down version of Wolverine. Again, I've never seen another X-Men movie, but that movie was really cool. WandaVision is even darker than that. Essentially, to recap, Wanda Scarlet Witch is having a mental breakdown because Vision, her robot husband, don't ask, died, but she has a power to create her own world. So she's trapped like dozens of people in this sitcom world, and now she's married to her dead boyfriend's corpse. Uh, I can't imagine this getting any better from here. I also kind of like it when there's female superheroes as the lead, right? So when that happens, I always think of my daughter who there's like not a lot of superhero movies for girls. There's not a lot of good video games for girls. So she loves Captain Marvel. She loves Wonder Woman, even Wonder Woman 1984, which I'm not discouraging her from. And what's really cool about Wanda in this show is that she's an antihero. Like she's doing bad things, but you can kind of sympathize with her and root for her. She's kind of like Walter White if Walter White was a freaking magician. So let's think about this. We've got a depressed person trapped in one place, living out a dystopian nightmare, coping by chasing nostalgia on television. Sound familiar? We'll be back soon with our guest today, John Strohmeyer. But first, a word from our sponsors. Did you know that firms using electronic payments collect an average of $15,179 more per lawyer and see 6% more revenue growth? Simply put, law firms using electronic payments, on average, bring in higher case volumes and more revenue. For more insights to help turbocharge your law firm, check out Clio's Legal Trends Report, a compilation of industry insights. Go to clio.com to download your free copy today. Imagine billing day being the happiest day of the month instead of the day you dread. Nobody went to law school because they love drafting invoices for clients. At TimeSolve, our attorneys save on average over eight hours a month in billing work. That means more billable time and turning billing day into happy day. Learn more about how to get to your time and billing happy place at timesolve.com. That's www.timesolvelevoffthee.com. Remember, that's timesolv.com. Okay, everybody, it's time to get to the chicken inside of this turducken. Let's interview our guest. My guest today is John Strohmeyer, who is the principal of Strohmeyer Law in Houston, which focuses on estate planning and estate administration. John is also the host of a great podcast, the Five Star Council Podcast, which you should take a listen to. John, welcome to the show. How are you? 
Oh, thanks for having me, Jared. I'm living the dream this morning. Podcast on podcast. We finally <laughs> we finally finish our uh, home and home. <sighs> we did it. It took me a lot. So I was the one that delayed the home and home. Much like the Major League Baseball season and every sports season that's occurred. We're a little late, but we finally made it through. So you're good this morning. That's great. I want to talk to you about kind of the subject of your podcast, which I've always been interested in. So I know you have a backstory for this. And I don't want to step on it too much, but if I recall correctly, you worked at the Four Seasons at one time, and you have this thesis that, like, the hotel industry is much better at customer service than law firms are. Granted. <laughs> so you want to talk about that a little bit and how that became the genesis for the podcast, which I really love, by the way. Yes, and thank you. So I had this first career where I worked in management for the Four Seasons Hotels. And so I left college. I wasn't ready for law school, needed to do something other than be in school for a few years. So I started working at the Four Seasons in Austin, was front desk for a year. Then I ended up getting promoted, and I was the night manager of the Austin location for three years, which was mm -hmm. great. Except that it, the major downside of being the night manager is I go in at 11 o'clock at night, and I leave at about 8 or 9 the next morning. <laughs> right. <laughs> so... You know, Tuesday through Saturdays for three years, that was my job. And they basically left that business in, you know, more or less my mid-20 hands. Right, you're the guy. <laughs> I was the guy. Like, the buck stopped with me. If there was a problem, I got to deal with it because I was the manager on duty. And I learned a lot of things about just taking care of business, how to run all sorts of what I'll call a normal functioning business, which may contrast with just about every law firm out there. <laughs> It's a fair point, yeah. for sure. And the Four Seasons in Austin is probably a busy Four Seasons, right? It is a very busy one. Every Four Seasons is different because they all – Four Seasons is just a management company. All they're doing is being brought in. They you know, put up their signs, but there are individual owners for each hotel. So it's not oh, owned. You know, hmm. It's not, I did not owned know that. by Four Seasons. It's owned by whoever it's owned by. And the Four Seasons just signs 50 to 100-year management contracts – to run the property in accordance with their own standards. Oh, very so, interesting. May I say that I love the Four Seasons? There's a Four Seasons on Lanai in Hawaii. Yes. Which is probably like the nicest hotel I've ever been to. It's amazing. I think there are two on Lanai. They bought... There's I think one those on are... the hill, I think, and then there's one like on the on the water. The one on right. the water is like amazing. Right. And you should have been the, the night only... manager over there. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a friend who's uh, been traveling with the company for, oh, golly, over a decade. You know, he was in the Maldives for years. He was in London. He's now in one of the mm. Hawaii properties. Anyway, people don't want to hear us wax on this. Oh, they totally do. No, all right. Really? So tell well, me, I mean, like, what is different about the way the hotel industry views service and the way law firms view service? There's a wide chasm there, right? There, it, well, we start with, why do people even go to hotels versus why are people coming to a lawyer? Mm -hmm. And when you're going to a hotel, and this is the same thing, like you and I both love Disney. Right. When we go to Disney, we're, you know, if we had a free Saturday and unlimited budget, we would just go to Disney or the Four Seasons, you know, the, the pampering entertainment or fun. <laughs> the pampering is mostly yeah. what it is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, kind of mix and match how much you're doing that at Disney or Four Seasons or Ritz or whatever. But when you go, when people go to hire a lawyer, they're not coming for any of those three things. True. You know, you're hiring a lawyer to get you out of a problem, put somebody else in a hurt or just resolve something. You know, adopt the kid, get the divorce done, get me out of jail, plan my estate, resolve the tax problem with the IRS. Whatever right. it is, that is a move the needle, get something done for me. You know, there may be some like sick entertainment in certain lawsuits, but I think most of the states have have laws against that. Yes. At least nominally <laughs> at this point. I think you're right. <laughs> so, I mean, that's a wide difference because yeah. when you start thinking about it, we're, you know, Disney and the Four Seasons have an incentive to spend more money on being the experience leader. And lawyers don't. You know, people right. aren't coming to us for a grand experience. It doesn't mean don't have a good experience, but <laughs> that's not the best return for your investment. Yes, I totally get it. And by the way, you've cued us in perfectly because I have a Disney Spotify playlist that's launching with this podcast. So that's for you, sir. Um, Excellent. So given that situation, right, that's somewhat better for lawyers, right? Because 
if the expectation that going to a lawyer was like going to Disney World, that'd be even worse, right? right. <laughs> so how do lawyers take those limited expectations and still deliver like really great customer service, knowing that people are coming to them for certain reasons that are different from why they go to a hotel? Exactly. So think about it this way. Experience and service are related. Service is what the business does to deliver for the client. And that includes things that the client's not going to see. So things that wouldn't be included in, in that received experience. So when you run payroll, that's part of the service of how you deliver things because you got to pay people. Mm -hmm. But clients don't care how you run payroll, whether it's ADP or Gusto or any of them. Like, they just don't care. Right. That's not part of their experience. And so making sure we kind of recognize the difference between experience is what the client is getting, but that is related to what the business is shooting out with their service. Mm -hmm. And not everything that goes into experience is going to help. So I remember I was at a conference a few years ago where there was a family law attorney who was just so proud of herself. You know, whenever a new client comes in, we ask him what their favorite drink is. And if we don't have it in the fridge, we will run out to the store and get it. <laughs> and I was just thinking to myself, that is nonsense. I don't believe you right now. I don't. I kind of don't you're believe it either. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'd like a Shasta. And they're yeah. going to be like, what? <laughs> I'd like some diet, uh, diet fresco. <laughs> and here's the thing. If you tried that at a Four Seasons or a Ritz or anywhere else, they will say, we're very sorry. We don't have your diet Shasta or whatever it else. Curses. Like, they're not going to run out and grab it. They'll offer you the alternatives they have on hand, but they're not going to run out and do it and buy that just for you. Mm. They just, you know, like they've got a business to run. They, they're they going to do the things they can do. They can, you know, they've got a bar stocked in the back. They can make something close. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, like don't, don't get wrapped up in, oh, we've got to have this drink menu. Or people aren't coming to us for that because then kind right. of the natural progression of that is, well, if this law firm down the street has a drink menu – we're going to have to outdo that. If clients come in in the morning, we're going to have a, we're going to have an omelet menu. <laughs> <laughs> right. I can get tab from yeah. the law firm across the street. <laughs> so given that situation, like it sounds like lawyers could actually go too far in terms of service. So is, is this more about like establishing a system with rails that you can follow? Right. It, it's about recognizing what are people paying for from mm -hmm. you and then don't get distracted with the kind of red herring products of yeah. drink menus, of, you know, like if you're a family lawyer and you're focused on adoption or divorce or whatever, you know, whatever that is, don't get distracted with the companies that are saying, well, we can help you bolt on business formations. Like mm. that that's a red herring distraction. People aren't coming to you for that. You need to stay focused on family law because if you don't know what you're doing with those business formations and, you know, Stay away from it. Same way that I, as an estate right. planner, don't want to do adoptions or divorce. I'm not going to dabble in that. Make it easy for people to know why you're coming there. And don't get sidelined with kind of the shiny objects. We're going to have everything. It's going to be much better for you to be focused on the one thing that you do really well and then deliver on that. So service for a lawyer is related to delivering on promises that you set up, some of which are, I'm a niche practitioner, I'm a good lawyer. I'm a good lawyer in this particular type of case, and I can talk to you about the legal process. Those are some, I'm sure. Are there others that lawyers should be looking at in terms of how they sell products? Right. I mean, it's, it's products or services, whatever right. you call it. I, you know, all of our clients are called days. clients. You know, people are going to say, <laughs> right. oh, well, you called them customers. That doesn't apply. To, you know, <laughs> lawyer mindset, I found the one way that I can defeat it. Look, <laughs> you have customers as well. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> what, the people who pay, you know, who fund your ability to pay payroll, whatever you want to call them. You know, it's, we want to make it ultimately easy for everybody involved. How can we make it faster? You know, the accepting credit cards, it makes it faster and easier for everybody. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. Using DocuSign where you can. Yeah. That makes it faster and easier for people. Now, look, as an estate planner, I generally like DocuSign because it's great when I can get things signed. But in terms of the protection for clients, they're going to be gone when their will is admitted to probate or we do whatever it is. I still like wedding signatures for that just for the everybody was in the room. Right. We knew that. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a lot harder to forge those than 
you know, create some PDF magic later on. <laughs> right, right. And so, you know, again, focusing on the endpoint, why are clients coming to you? What are they really looking for? You know, estate planning, it's not just they want a will, it's they want things to be tied up relatively easy once they're gone. Right. And part of that's going to mean we want to make sure that their documents are valid and we, we don't have any potential challenges. So how do we make that easy for them? And sometimes that means, we're, look, we're going to do it the old-fashioned way for signing documents mm -hmm. because that offers a, a greater level of security for clients for right now. Right. And I was on your website the other day and I thought you had some really good messaging on this. So I think folks should check out your website too if they get a oh, chance to. I mean, the messaging, I love... <laughs> One of the things that I found on that is I'm you know, trying to make it easy for people to realize if I'm their guy or not. Right. And right. I get at least one or two new clients every month who say, you know, we were thinking about you versus another lawyer. And then we got to your you know, staff page. And we saw you had your dogs listed as employees. <laughs> and that's when we knew, you know, you were our guy. Or people yeah. are like, that's terrible. I hate that. <laughs> and I mean, and, but that's OK. That's, that's the whole point. That's the whole point. If yes. you go on my website and you see that Griswold, my chief human <laughs> resources officer, is there and you're like, this guy isn't serious enough, go with God. Like there are plenty of, you know, regular lawyers who are going to be just fine, who have the skills to help you and will align with that mindset of we don't like dogs or we don't want you being that unserious. Right. It's a heavy right. business dealing with death like this all day long. I'm going to have some fun as it makes sense. And so for the people who like it, all the better. It, you know, like I've made it easy. You're you're not going to get the boring old lawyer, but if you want that, right. there are plenty of them. Yeah, I think you're right. Like, I think a lot of lawyers look and they say, okay, I want to grab as many clients as I can. But the idea is that you're not going to be able to work with everybody anyway. So why not make it easy for people to make that choice? All right, like I, w I want to ask you one more question. And this is what we try to do at the end of each interview segment. Like, say I'm a lawyer, I've been listening to your conversation and I'm like, man, customer service. It sounds like a good idea. I think John makes a lot of great points. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> so <laughs> how do you start as like a solo or small firm attorney? Where do you go with this information? Where do we start? Well, obviously you subscribe to the Five Star Council podcast. Start with episode one. Yes. Yes. Link in the show notes. Beyond that, it starts with the fuzzy, you know, determine the firm values, figure out what you're going for and what you're trying to deliver. Because until you know you know, the people who should be working for you, and that's what the values are for, you know, mm -hmm. having, right. you want to know who are the people who should show up in your firm. Because if you haven't spent that time, and most of the firms I've worked at didn't have any specific set up values, which means they defaulted to bill hours, make money, be nice to people as it makes sense. But, uh, you know, if you want to toss somebody under the bus every now and again, that's okay. <laughs> right. That's the problem. If you don't define it, you know, power abhors a vacuum, and so right. you're going to get that filling things in, and then you get the standard toxic law firm culture that nobody likes, and every, you know, most lawyers are familiar with, and it's terrible. So you start there, yeah. you figure out kind of where you're going, what that practice vision looks like, and then for me, it's, you know, the differentiation between the other kind of mindset stuff that is, how are we going to make this easy for everybody involved? Not only the client, but we've got to think we've got to make it easy for the owners, you know, the lawyers who own the firm, yeah. as well as the people working in the firm. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, the lawyers, the partners who are wearing two hats as both working in the business and owning it, but as well as legal assistants, paralegals, interns, whoever else, you can't just make it easy and focus only on the client. You've got to think about all three of those groups and what's going to make it easy for everybody to be involved. Because if you just focus solely on the client, you're focusing on the people who are most likely to turn over. Yeah. The clients come and go, followed by the employees come and go. And then finally, the owners are the last ones to come and go, <laughs> eh, more or less, though. Right. No, that's, I think those are all great points. And I don't think people view it as kind of like a triangle like that. I think when they talk about customer service, it's all about the clients. But looking at it in a holistic way, I think makes a lot of sense. John, this was great. We're moving on to the rump roast. Are you coming back? Yes. All right. Okay. Okay. Depends that, on your phrasing. <laughs> Fra phrasing is always important. Okay. So we're going to take a break. That's John Strohmeyer of Strohmeyer Law and the Five Star Council podcast. 
check out his podcast, get more information and advice on customer service in the law firm. We'll take one final sponsor break so you can hear more about what our sponsors can do for your law practice. Then stay tuned for the rump roast. It's even more supple than the roast beast. Now more than ever, an effective marketing strategy is one of the most important things your law firm can have. And Scorpion can help. With nearly 20 years of experience serving the legal industry, Scorpion has proven methods to help you get the high-value cases you deserve. Join thousands of attorneys across the country who have turned to Scorpion for effective marketing and technology solutions. For a better way to grow your practice, visit scorpionlegal.com. As the largest legal-only call center in the U.S., Alert Communications helps law firms and legal marketing agencies with new client intake. Alert captures and responds to all leads 24-7, 365 as an extension of your firm in both Spanish and English. Alert uses proven intake methods, customizing responses as needed, which earns the trust of clients and improves client retention. To find out how Alert can help your law office, call 866-827-5568 or visit alertcommunications.com slash LTN. Welcome. Welcome back to the rear end of the legal toolkit, what we like to call the rump roast. It's a grab bag of short form topics of my choosing. So, John, we're going to play a little game today called Defining Moments. So, most lawyers would look at definitions in Black's Law Dictionary, right? Correct. I'm not like most lawyers. No. I look at definitions in Urban Dictionary, which you may or may not be familiar with. I'm assuming you are. I am. <laughs> I think phrasing is going to come up a lot if you're looking a in phrasing, Urban Dictionary. <laughs> phrasing is going to come up a lot in this segment. Um, here's how we're going to play. I'm going to take a trending word from Urban Dictionary, and I want you to guess the meaning. Ooh. Are you ready? I stand ready. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start with a super easy one, right? Here's a word that's trending that probably everybody knows. So, John Strohmeyer, what is a Karen? Uh, a Karen <laughs> is typically a woman, Caucasian woman, mid-40s to early 60s, who demands to speak to the manager because <laughs> she is being wronged in a service, uh, or she's being wronged by a server at some retail business. See, look at that, man. I tried to tie it into like five-star council stuff, customer service issues, and you nailed it. Like your definition is better than the Urban Dictionary definition, but so I'm not even going to read it. Yeah, I'm a paid professional. You know, Urban Dictionary just comes from anybody on the internet can throw in any, any garbage <laughs> well, there. Come that's, on. that's right. That's right. Um, all right. I'm going to make it a little bit harder now. We're going to delve into some more interesting territory. Okay. What is a dog shot? And I'm going to give you a clue. The derivation is Australian. And these are all trending terms on Urban Dictionary this week, perhaps this day. This day. Um, I have no idea. So I'm just going, <laughs> I'm going to say this is the Australian version for a dog's breakfast, which means it's something covered in Marmite <laughs> and garbage. <laughs> That's a great get. That's a that's actually better than the Urban Dictionary definition too, as well. So good for you. You are a paid professional. Um, so what is so what is it's, dog it's actually when someone hits you in the back when you're not looking. Oh. So I did not know that either. That was new to me. So here we go. Next, what is bacon cakes? Bacon cakes. <laughs> so this has to do clearly with being in the kitchen. And preparing cakes, but that's not what the kids would say. They're clearly, this is probably the new version of stacking bills. Stacking or bills? Or stacks. You know, just making money all day long. Baking cakes. That's, that's, that's where the money comes from. I, I sell my cakes. Hot and ready. That's a pretty good guess, but wrong. You were closer oh. with the kitchen definition. So, baking cakes is making babies. Oh. The Urban Dictionary definition is oh. getting your grind on without a Jimmy hat. Which mm. doesn't necessarily guarantee that there's going to be a baby. It's kind of no, like playing no. Russian roulette at that point. Yeah. So I learned something new today. You learned something new today. All right. Ready for the next one? Let's go. All right. What is Edward Forty Hands? Again, trending on Urban Dictionary today. Edward Forty Hands. Edward Forty Hands is the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> this is a drinking game where you yes. duct tape... A 40-ounce bottle of malted liquor into each of your hands, and you cannot untape them <laughs> until you have finished the bottles. This stems from Edward Scissorhands. It is a great way to embed shards of glass in your hand if you are not so careful. 
Oh my God, John, you're a beast. You are crushing the rump roast better than anybody ever has. That is exactly <laughs> spawn on. Although the idea of drinking 80 ounces of malt liquor makes me want to die, frankly. Oh, dude. What, what would your choice be? I'd probably go with like Old English or something. I don't even know if it matters. You know, <laughs> the only way out is through. It's through death. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, I got another one for you. This is one that I did not know. Again, trending this week. What is knocking? Knocking. Knocking? <laughs> Can I get a spelling on it? Oh, yeah. Uh, K-N-O-C-K-I-N with a little apostrophe at the end. Oh, that's just yelling at somebody, you know, blowing up their phone. <laughs> All right, know? good guess. Good guess. Um, it is actually the act of trying to convince a prostitute that you would be a better pimp for her than her current pimp. So it's pimp upgrading, essentially. Huh. Which I did not know was a thing, but apparently Look, you always got to make sure you spell it, you know, upgrade with a double D. Right. <laughs> John, well played. That's all the definitions I have. Oh. I'm out. <laughs> there we go. Although I'm kind of tempted to go back on Urban Dictionary and look for some more now because you're so stupendous. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I keep my, my ear... Ear to the street. There we go. Clear, clearly, I'm Nose impressed. Nose to the grindstone, ear to the street. <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> I appreciate it. You've been a great sport. Thanks for coming on today. Seriously, it was, no, it was a lot it of was fun having you. A lot of fun. <laughs> All right. So, everybody, that was John Strohmeyer. He's a proprietor of Strohmeyer Law PLLC in Houston. He's also the host of the Five Star Council podcast, focusing on customer service and legal. Go check out his show. The link's going to be in the show notes. And that, my friends, will do it for another episode of the Legal Toolkit podcast, where, as it turns out, we're all living in a simulation. <laughs> <laughs>